Hi, everyone. Welcome to our weekly meeting with Tyler Elston for 145. As always, raise your hand if you have a question and I will call on you. First up, we've got, oh, where'd it go? Tyler Donahue. Hey, Tyler, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, just through four games, I'm curious how you would assess your play at linebacker and overall how you feel like you guys have, uh, I guess, answered some questions at middle linebacker in that spot. Yeah, I think um, throughout the four, four games, I've definitely seen growth out of my play, out of the other linebackers as well. Um, obviously, experience was a big question um, out of our room. So the first four games were huge, and I honestly just think um, the development game by game has been um, evident for all of us. And uh, I think it's really going to pay dividends down the line, getting better each week. Johnny Collins. Tyler, do you think the diversity of the opponents you faced, the, the last two were, were more running teams, first two like to throw the ball a little bit more. Do you think that kind of gotten you ready in a way that, that, that maybe – uh, at, at that position, you, you wouldn't have gotten if, if you would face uh, a different kinds of opponents. Yeah, I think the diversity was huge. I mean, each game that we've played um, came in with a bunch of respect for each of our opponents, um, different schemes. They've they showed us a lot of different things in four games, passing attacks, running attacks, um, gap schemes, zones, all different kind of man beaters, zone beaters, whatever it can be. So um, just all that will definitely pay um, – a bunch for us down the line, uh, going into games, seeing a lot of different things already. It's, it's only going to help us. Joe Smeltzer. Hey, Tyler. So the first two games forced one turnover combined. Last two games, seven turnovers plus one on special teams too. What's been different? Honestly, everything's been consistent. Um, we, we practice the same week by like week in, week out. Um, it's really the same approach. Uh, it's kind of one of those things that, you know, if you keep doing things the right right way, um, if you keep attacking the ball, if you keep being physical, and you know, um, they, they honestly just come. So I think that's the same message we've had since week one. Uh, same message since camp in spring is just be consistent, stay the path, and uh, they'll start coming. John, petition up. Hey, Tyler, uh, I asked Curtis about this a few weeks ago and just wanted to get your insight too. Uh, Dan Connor being back with the team, all-time leading tackler. How much time have you spent around him, kind of early impressions of him, and has he helped shape your game at all this season? Yeah, Dan Connor is a great guy to have in the room, a uh, great great person uh, to have on the staff. Like, he's he's a great, like, person in general. Um, I think the biggest thing I've taken from him is that, you know, he has a lot of experiences at Penn State, obviously playing here. So a lot of questions that I had kind of just even as a student athlete, um, I was able to go to him and just kind of, you know, pick his brain about certain experiences he had and um, his reactions and stuff like that. So I think he's been a, a huge help for our, our team as a whole. Travis Johnson. Tyler, I'm wondering if you could take me back and, and just kind of uh... – what, what was your first interaction with Manny like when you first met him? What was your first impression? Um, you know, how did he come off? And, and when did you know that, uh, you know, he, he maybe had a mind for, for doing what he does now? Yeah, so when he first came in, um, obviously when a new coach comes in, everybody's going to be skeptical. You know, you get recruited by a, a previous coach. Um, but, I mean, he, he respected all of us right away. And it was one of those things that respect was mutual. Obviously, he had a, a good background, so there was really no question um, what kind of coach he was. And then, you know, obviously, he kind of laid back a little bit until after bowl game. Um, and then once that finished and we got really into coaching and being around him, um, I mean, every interaction was positive, And um, he does a great job at building relationships and consistently building them with everyone on the defense and everyone on the team. Luciano Chetling. Hey, Tyler, I hope you're doing well, and thanks for your time. Absolutely. You have already almost doubled your snaps from last year and improved upon every statistical category already. What aspect of your game would you say you have improved upon the most? You know, just the, just the maturity. Um, I think that's the hardest thing uh, for any player, uh, especially at this level, is, you know, everybody wants to maybe make plays, make an impact early, get on the field early. 
Uh, just kind of being consistent, being mature about the process and just knowing that if I do my job, um, it's going to put the team in the, the best situation to win. And, you know, if I help those around me, um, that's also going to help us. So really just being the, the best teammate possible and, you know, just trying to continue to grow every day. Sam, come. Hey, Tyler, thanks for doing this. Um, just curious what you've seen offensively from Northwestern on film and what your expectations are for the Saturday. Yeah, so we dove into film uh, a little bit yesterday, obviously. Um, spent a lot of time. Uh, just the LB, just kind of player-on-player type deal. Um, you know, I have a lot of respect for Northwestern. I, they have a lot of, you know, they have a lot of solid players. I think their offensive line is uh, pretty good, especially in the run game. Um, running backs, you know, they play well off their old line. And even schematically, they show a lot of good things. So I have a lot of respect for them, and I'm really excited to dive into film more this week. Hey, Tyler, thanks for doing this. So I kind of want to take a step back off from your playing days. Can you kind of describe your earliest memories from uh, playing football, whether it's from playing Pee Wee all the way up till now? Yeah, I was actually, I just talked to uh, PJ and Nick Dawkins about this. They're both of my roommates. Um, I was like taking them back to, I remember the exact moment that um, my parents asked me if I wanted to sign up for football. So I live about... I don't know, walking distance. It's like caddy corner from my house is a park that the football field's attached to. So, and my dad was a, a youth football coach even before I played. Um, it was just kind of one of the things that he loved to do. So, you know, I was always around it. And the moment that he asked me, my mom asked me, me and my brother, obviously were extremely excited. And just like the fact that I was four or five years old at the time that I could remember the exact moment where I was in my house and stuff like that. It's kind of it's kind of crazy that that was what 16, 17 years ago, whatever it is. Um, and I still remember it. I think it just shows like football's had a, a huge impact on my life. And, you know, just I could go back each year, just kind of like big things in my life throughout football. And like it's all connected, you know, like the happiest moments of my life mostly came from football or around football. And the saddest moments of my life came around from sport. So, you know, I'm extremely grateful for the sport. And that's it's a major part of my life. Andrew Destin. Tyler, thanks for doing this uh, again. Um, when you look at, you're obviously, you know, field general, quarterback of the defense, all those sorts of things. When you look at this secondary and the success that they've had this year, what do you kind of chalk that up in terms of the number of pass breakups, generating turnovers the last couple of games? From your vantage point, what do you think has allowed them to be so successful? I think like anything, defense is about trust. You know, if I if I know the defensive line is going to play solid in front of me, you know, stay in their gaps, strike their keys, do their job, then it allows me to play better. It allows me to be comfortable. It allows me to do my job. And I think it, it's like a snowball effect. Now they're in the back end, obviously, but if they know that the defensive line, the linebackers, even the court, like even themselves in the run support are going to be able to stop the run and, you know, um, play solid defense that allows them to play their position at the best ability. So I think it's all about trust. And I think we're able to build trust within the defense as a unit. And uh, the chemistry is just, you know, continuously growing. And I think that's a major part of it. Donnie Collins. Tyler, James has mentioned occasionally over the years the shares on a, the night before a game. Um, how much do you look forward to them as a player uh, hearing from your teammates and, and staff members and, and people like that. And, and what do they, what do they mean to you uh, to hear those? And well, how do they help you kind of get you ready for a game? Yeah. So I think the biggest thing is um, it kind of really shows you that everybody has a story and no matter who you are and how you act around a group of people that, you know, there's stuff inside you that you maybe don't share frequently. So I think it allows us to really get closer with um, everybody on the staff because, it's not just a defense thing or offensive thing or just a staff thing. So we get to see like, you know, perspectives of life and experiences throughout their whole team. Um, so I really think it just builds like a strength and a love and uh, a chemistry within the team that, you know, it, it helps uh, having a strong bond on the, on the field, wanting to play for each other and wanting to, wanting to play for the coaches is a major part of the game. And I think that's just another way to elevate it. Tyler Donahue. We've seen a lot of Abdul Carter involved uh, in September, and James Franklin had some strong words of, of uh, praise for him last week and how he's hit the ground running. What have you seen from Abdul getting to campus in, in the summer to this point that's put him in this spot, and how big of a problem can he be for opposing offenses in the next couple months? 
I think the biggest thing that I see with him is obviously he's got a great skill set, um, but it's more so uh, above the shoulders. He, he's got a great uh, mindset, a great approach, and he's continuously eager to learn. So I think he's going to keep developing, and I think he's going to continue to grow um, into a, a major part of our defense. And, you know, it's great to have him playing Will Linebacker, him and Kurt. Um, obviously, he's learning a lot, a lot off of Kurt, and I think that that duo is a, extremely important. Um, but, you know, I just – I think his approach is everything, and I, I think he's doing things the right way. Travis Johnson. Tyler, if I have my numbers right, you guys have – <clears throat> excuse me you guys have been on the field um I guess you guys have, have defended a, a, against 10 10 or more played drives 10 times this season so far but have only given up two touchdowns what what enables you guys to to find your second wind out there when a drive starts getting longer is it how much of it is his conditioning how much of his mindset what else lends itself to that you know it's a it's a mixture of everything um we have a great obviously strength and conditioning program here and you know sometimes we're in the summer and you're like you're doing the workouts like man what are we doing this for? But obviously now like it pays dividends. And then, you know, on top of it, like we rotate guys. And I think that's a huge part of it. Um, continuously being fresh is huge and um, just being coached to, to face adversity and just settle down. Like there's times, yeah, like, okay, they made, maybe they got a big play. They got a first down on it. We try to get them on, you know, a third and medium. If they got it, if they, if they convert it, it's really just like settling down, taking deep breaths, set your feet and be like, okay, let's do it. Um, never really panicking and just, you know, just taking it play by play. Okay, we have time for two more. Joe Smeltzer. Tyler, uh, we talked with Curtis before the Auburn game, and he was talking about how he likes to pick Jack Ham's brain uh, any chance he gets about the linebacker position. Is that um, a mindset that you have too? And what are your, and I guess the rest of the linebackers, experiences uh, with uh, talking with Jack Ham since you've been at Penn State because that's a living legend obviously so yeah it's awesome to have someone obviously like that um, at Penn State um, and, and, and every time I see him I, I really do try to talk football with him and I even talk about life with him too he's he's a great person um, and he, he he does have a lot of insight obviously he played at a a different time but I mean football at the end of the day is about it's tackling and, and blocking and the team that tackles the best and blocks the best usually wins so um you know he, he has a, a lot of great insight and you know he's he's built relationships with a lot of the linebackers on the team um and yeah I, I think he's been huge I love I look forward to seeing seeing him um look forward to talking with him and you know it kind of always brings a smile to our face last question Connor Cord. Tyler, I know I just asked you about your kind of growing up and you're playing a peewee football, but kind of, can you kind of take me through the recruiting process when, you know, James Franklin and then D DC Brent Pry was calling you up to eventually come to play at Penn State? Yeah, so my recruiting process was uh, fairly late. Uh, I was going in my senior year that summer before I had offers. Um, kind of blew up, you know, um, Mac schools, Ivy Leagues, all that, Patriot League schools. Um, and then the power five, Louisville is the first, and that, that kind of got me some attention. Um, I had to go to some camps um, to earn scholarships. That's kind of like the name of my whole process. I did go to camps. Um, and I, I camped at Penn State, um, came up, camp, had great conversations, showed out, came up again, camped again. And um, that was when I was able to, to earn a scholarship. And uh, you know, it was, it was great. It was a great feeling. I loved how it happened. I loved how, you know, it was a camp thing. It was an earned thing. Um, it wasn't given to me. And that's kind of like how I love it. Um, you know, and, and especially having it in person, getting that offer in person was huge to me. You know, just basically committing right there was huge. And I, I just, you know, I just felt right. It felt right immediately, obviously being from PA, but um, just, just the relationships that I built literally on coming up here three, four times. Um, it was huge. It was everything to me. So yeah, it was it was very emotional. Um, but you know, I'm I'm so happy that I ended up here. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Tyler. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.